We're continuing on in our series on snapshots from a spiritual journey. <clears throat> and the spiritual journey is the journey of the apostle, I mean, of the, the great man of God, Moses. I almost said the apostle Paul. He had a great spiritual journey too. But uh, these are more like snapshots uh, than they are uh, anything else. And a snapshot that we want to take today, uh, Moses is writing this, and I'm pulling him out of the text there, and it's like a selfie because he writes about himself. And he takes this snapshot, and today's snapshot is going to be the one that I call Overcoming Your Weaknesses. Now, there's all sorts of weaknesses. When you think about weaknesses, uh, someone recently told me, he said, you know what my weakness is? He says, I, I got a financial weakness. <laughs> he said, uh, the Lord just knew I wasn't good with money, so he didn't give me any. <laughs> You know, financial weakness. Some people have physical weaknesses. Uh, some people have uh, social weaknesses. They just don't seem to have those skills. Uh, some people have emotional weaknesses. They te seem to get either angry all the time or they're depressed all the time. Uh, they have these, these, these weaknesses all right, that uh, uh, happen to us. Well, Moses knew he had weakness. In fact, uh, he identifies his own weakness. He says... Uh, that he's got faltering lips. Uh, faltering lips, that's the whole idea that you just can't say what you want to say, mean what you want to mean. Uh, he's got these faltering lips. In fact, he's told us three times when we conclude the text that we're in today that he's got a problem with his speech. He's just straight out with this. He's just right up front. I'm slow of speech. Remember when God appeared to him in the burning bush? And he said, listen, I am slow of speech. I said, I, I called him a... You know, marble mouth. And he said, I just can't get my words out. I don't know, I don't know what his impediment was, <clears throat> but he, he, he identified as such. In our text today, he's going to say twice, I speak with faltering lips. I speak with faltering lips. I, I picked the New International Version for those, those references. He, he's just saying, uh, I, I got this problem. It's a physical thing. It's my weakness. Uh, some of you might feel like, like that. I've never had that problem of not being able to stand up in front of a group and speak. One year for vacation Bible school, I volunteered for every part <laughs> in the program. And they said, you can't do all the parts. I mean, it's, it's a vac vacation Bible school program. So even as a child, I didn't mind getting up, speaking in front of everybody. Only problem was, I'm a terrible memorizer. And so I wound up having to try to read all my parts because I took too many parts to memorize. And then and that's the year they had caught on that... Uh, He's, he's is not as good in front of people as he thinks he's in front of people. <laughs> Moses got just the other effect. You know, he, he, he perceives himself as being a terrible speaker. And uh, he's identified his weakness three times. His weakness is actually, <clears throat> what makes it a weakness is that it is preventing him from moving forward and doing what God wants him to do. He's got a weakness, and because of that, he's not speaking. And God says, well, listen, it's kind of like God's given all of us the Great Commission. Go and preach the gospel. Go and share your faith. Make disciples of all nations. He's given that to all of us. And, and, uh, but I'm not very good at speaking. Uh, Paul writes to Timothy, he says, do the work of an evangelist. That means uh, take the good news to people. He's not an evangelist. He's a pastor. But he's saying, that doesn't mean you don't do the Great Commission. You still do the Great Commission. And so a weakness is whatever it is that is preventing you from doing what God wants you to do. And he's identified his weakness. But, you know, Moses wasn't alone. Uh, this is why I started off with the Apostle Paul. Paul also had a weakness. And, and Paul knew what his weakness was. In fact, he writes extensively about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he says, a thorn was given me in the flesh. So he also had some kind of physical difficulty. Some think it was his eye reading, because later he writes, he says, I see how large I'm writing with my own hand, uh, because perhaps he had bad eyes. Some think maybe he got malaria, okay, because he talks about his illness when he was in Galatia area. Uh, we're not sure what his thorn in the flesh, his physical infirmity was. But he says it was a messenger sent from Satan. Wasn't Satan? Satan sent one of his emissaries who was just hounding, hounding him uh, in his physical condition. 
uh, kind of like, remember in the book of Job when Satan went into the presence of God and said, uh, and God said, hey, did you consider my servant Job? Oh, he only, he only follows you because you, you bless him in every way. And he says, if you, if you were just to take his health away, and God says, well, do whatever you need to do, just don't take his life. And that Satan then attacks Job and takes his health away. I don't know. Paul sees here something is going on, and he says, three times. Kind of like the three times Moses said, I can't speak, I can't speak, I can't speak. Three times he says, I appeal to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. I don't know, have you ever prayed that God would do something he didn't do it? You know, well, if, if not, then you're the only one I know. Okay. Because three times he prays and God says, no, no. I'm calling the shots here, not you. And I have something more important to accomplish with what is going on in your infliction. He says here, listen, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. I want you to depend upon my grace and not having an easy, cushy life. I notice that people call upon the Lord when they're in a jam. I learned this when I was a young boy. My Sunday school teacher, one of them, had fought in World War II, and he had a real foxhole conversion. He had gotten wounded uh, in France fighting the Germans, and he made a promise to God in the foxhole. He said he would not a praying man. But he prayed at that moment when he was wounded and thought he was going to die and said, God, if you, if you rescue me from this, I will serve you the rest of my life. And to this day, he still attends the Berean Baptist Church, which is now in Livonia. Okay? God doesn't always take away the problem, but he's promised to have his grace sufficient to the time of need. And that's what he says, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. What? God demonstrates his power when we're at our weakest point. And so he says here, so I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses. It just seems to me, God is going to most likely call you to do the thing that's last on your list of what you want to do. Why? Because that's last on your list because... You feel I'm no good at that. That's my weakness. And God is inclined to call you there because it's the one place you won't get all puffed up and proud because of yourself, and you will say, God did this. And the whole goal is whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, we do it all for the glory of God. And that's the whole point. He says, so I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ might dwell in me. You see, if I think I can do it in my own energy, then Christ doesn't do it. Therefore, he said, I'm content with my weaknesses. I'm I'm content with insults, hardships, persecutions, calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Why am I strong? It's right there because the power of Christ dwells in us when we give up on ourselves and we say, Lord, you've got to do this. So here's the principle I want to draw. There is a principle here. When I am weak, then I am strong. Because when I am weak, I don't depend upon myself. I depend upon God who's much greater to be the source of my strength. Now, having said that, I want to say that you have some weaknesses too, and I know you have weaknesses. We all have weaknesses. In fact, Hebrews chapter 12 says this, let us throw off everything that hinders. It's like you were running a race for the Lord, and and all of a sudden, I got a ball and chain around my leg. How am I competing? I I got this hindrance hanging on to me, and and he says, and the sin that so easily entangles us. Some think that uh, the First part of that verse where it says, everything that hinders me, there are good things that hinder us from doing and serving God. I once knew a man who got so involved in the local church, he was involved in everything, youth ministries, deacons, you name it, whatever, he was there because he was running from God calling him to actually be a pastor. 
So he got involved in all these good things, wonderful things, trying to avoid doing the very thing that God had called him to do. Finally, he gave up on all that, went into the ministry in the middle of his life and became a really powerful preacher. I loved the man. He was a great preacher. But there's also that sin that so easily besets us, is what King James says. We all have that one thing in our life, and it goes like this. If I could just conquer, and you fill in the blank, then I could live the perfect Christian life. And it will be different for all of us. Because we all have different things that so easily entangle us. As I go in this passage, I want to just make this remark. Today God says, don't let your weakness get the best of you. Whatever you've identified in your mind, he says, don't let that get the best of you. He says, and the question is, then why? Why not let that get the best of me? Because God said, I said so. You ever had one of those situations where you're, you're with your kids and your kids keep telling, challenge you? Well, why can't I? Why can't I? And finally, as a dad, you say, because I said so. <laughs> And God has been putting up with Moses here. <laughs> and the Lord spoke. There's a word. I said so to Moses and Aaron. God gave them orders. God said so. It goes on a little bit further. Charging them. God said so. And that's what he's saying. Moses, I told you to go to Pharaoh. I said so. Don't let your weaknesses... Stop you from doing what you're supposed to do. Why? Because I said so. And the next part of this verse, the passage there, it's really unusual. All of a sudden, in the middle of this narrative, there's dropped in a genealogy. And it seems like, well, then this genealogy is kind of out of place. But it's really not out of place because as you get to the end of the genealogy, it's the genealogy about Moses, and, and it says this. It was the same Aaron and Moses to whom the Lord said, bring the Israelites out of the land of Egypt, company by company. It was they who, who spoke to the king of Egypt to bring out of Egypt the same Moses and Aaron. He's saying, listen, I don't want you to think I got the wrong guy. I know you, Moses. I know your speech impediment, Moses. I know your weakness, Moses. And he says the same there. You can just take Moses' name out and put your name in there too. He says, I know know you. Lord knows you. He knows the stuff you're made of. He knows your weakness. And out of all the world, He chose you. He chose you to bear His light in this world. He said, because I know you. He said, but also, because I told you. Uh, you ever heard the expression, how many times have I told you? <laughs> I, I see that here. On the day when the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, he said to him, I mean, he's already told him earlier when he was in Midian. Now he's in Egypt. He said, I am the Lord. Tell Pharaoh, the, the king of Egypt, all that I'm speaking to you. Listen, I told you. you. You see, we know what to share. Bottom line, if you're a Christian, you know what to share. You have your story that nobody can refute. I told you my story. I got saved when I was eight years old at a Christian camp, sitting around a campfire. I prayed. The man put my name in John 3.16, and I prayed Jesus would come into my heart. And he did. And I can tell my story, and I tell it better than anybody can tell it because it's my story. I can't tell your story as good as you can tell it. He says, I told you, tell your story. To Moses, he said, go tell Pharaoh. To us, he says, tell everyone. Everywhere you go, just tell them. And you can do it subtly. One day I was at, uh, working at a secular business and while, while I was doing my job, a lady came up to the copy machine that was right behind me and, and uh, I heard her say, Oh, Jesus. I turned around to her I said, Oh, I know him. <laughs> and she looked at me and she said, You know, I do too. <laughs> and we got this conversation going. She said, Really, I should have did that like a prayer. Oh, Jesus, I need your help. You see what I'm saying? It's so easy. It pops up all over if we just want to talk about Jesus. 
He says, I told you, I told you. Moses at this point, here's the last time he's going to do this. He says, but Lord, he says, I am poor, I'm a poor speaker, poor speaker. I have faltering lips is what the New International Version says. I have faltering lips. Why in the world would Pharaoh listen to me? Hang on to that expression. Why would Pharaoh listen to me? Isn't that what you're thinking when you're going to share your faith? Why would this person ever listen to me? Who am I? Where's my credibility? Why would, why would they listen to me? And then the Lord answers right here. The Lord said, I made you. See, I have made you. I made you, Moses. That's why he's going to listen to you. I cut this verse a little short. I want you to see the rest of it. He says, not only have I made you, but I made you like God to Pharaoh. Whoa. Now, this is a pretty important statement to me. Moses is afraid of Pharaoh. God is saying it should be the other way around. Pharaoh should be afraid of you. It really should be that way. In 2 Corinthians, it says that my gospel is a savor of life to those who believe, and it is a savor of death to those who do not. They should be afraid of me because I have the words of eternal life. And what you do with those words is going to, going to determine the, your, your outcome, your eternity forever. He said, listen, I have made you like God to Pharaoh. We see sometimes ourselves so small because I am so weak. And God says, listen, when I'm with you, you've got the majority. <laughs> when I'm with you, you're all powerful. When I'm with you, you're like God to that other person. Because I'm with you. I'm with you. The next verse is very interesting. The Lord said to Moses, See, I've made you like God to the Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron shall be your prophet. Listen, I've equipped you. You don't have to do this alone. And neither do we. We all have one another. We get together. We get pumped up on Sunday. We go out and we tell people. You know, I've shared with you the easiest evangelism strategy in the whole world. Just come and see. You, you go to work. You go someplace. You say, oh, man, at church, preacher said this. It was in the Bible about Moses. It was so cool. You ought to come and see. So simple. So simple. He said, listen, I equipped you. Aaron will be your prophet. Now, the question is, what is a prophet? Well, a prophet is someone to whom God has spoken, and then they take that message that they have, and they pass it on to someone else. You know what a prophet is? Listen, this is my definition. You won't find this in any theology books. A prophet is God's gossip. Whatever you hear from God, you, you tell somebody else. You just run and tell them, do you know what God said? Oh, you run over here. Hey, do you know what God said? That's what a prophet does. Whatever God says, they, they tell others. In this case, listen what he says. I am commanding you, Moses, and here's my command. I'm speaking directly to you, Moses. And you're going to be, you're going to tell that. You're going to, you're going to gossip to your brother Aaron. And then your brother Aaron, because that's what you're going to tell it to, you're going to tell it to your brother Aaron, and then he's going to be like, you're going to be like God to your brother Aaron, and, and he's going to then tell the message to somebody else. He's going to go tell Pharaoh. And that's what we do. This is, this is the process. I'm a prophet in, in that sense of the word. Moses wrote down his words in the book. I read the book. I'm telling you the same story that Moses told. I tell it to you. As I do that, I'm a spokesperson. I'm like Aaron. I'm standing there with, with Moses. I'm taking Moses' words and I'm repeating them. And I'm passing them on. That's what a prophet does. God wants us all to be his mouthpiece. To share what we've learned. To tell others. Why? Because I commanded you. You can overcome your weaknesses because I commanded that you could do that. Listen, he says, you can overcome your weaknesses because I will protect you. The first part of this is that, hey, now with Pharaoh, is not the case. Pharaoh is not my firstborn son. Israel is my firstborn son. Hey, Moses, you're part of Israel. Uh, you're part of my firstborn son. I protect my son, but... He said, I will harden Pharaoh's heart and I will multiply my signs and wonders in Egypt just like I told you, Moses, I was going to do. And he says, and when Pharaoh does not listen to you, I will lay my hand upon Egypt. I'm, I'm going to just 
push them down into the ground. I'll squash them. But that same hand, he says, I will bring my people, Israel, company by company, out of land of Egypt with great acts of judgment. He's predicting what's going to happen in the remainder of the book. And finally, he says, here's why you can overcome, because I am the Lord. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I stretch my hand out against Egypt and bring the Israelites out from among, among them. Dads, and this is Father's Day, so I got tied dads in here somewhere. I don't know what gets the best of you. I don't know what your weakness is, but I do know what God said to Moses is true for you. When you are weak, you are strong. I say it's misspelled, but it's because. When you are weak, you're strong because. Here's why. God said so. God knows you. God's told you. God made you. God's equipped you. He's given you everything you need. He's commanded you. And he's promised to protect you. And he says, I am the Lord. I am with you. Oh, my goodness. All right, I got all the reasons why. So how do you overcome weakness? How do I overcome it? You ready for this? It's really profound. You just do it. <laughs> Before there was Nike, there was Moses. Well, watch this. I know Nike's, you know, they, they, they've got trademark on this. They really owe it to Moses. All the royalty should go back to Moses. <laughs> Moses and Aaron, what did, they just did so. They did it. They did it. They did just as the Lord commanded them. We could come up for all the reasons in the world why we shouldn't. Moses sure was. But to overcome his weaknesses, he just had to go do it. He did it. And you know what? I don't know what your weakness is, but you can overcome it too. You just do it. You just do what God says. You just do what he says. Whether you feel like it or not, you just do it. And God will give you the victory. Why? Because when I am weak, then I am strong. Because he'll do it in and through me. So dads, just do it. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're very, very thankful that the word of God addresses us in such a way You know our weaknesses. We know them too. We often don't talk about them lest somebody would leverage them against us. We're very private in our lives. Oh, that we would be more open like Moses, at least with you, Lord, and identify our weakness. And hear what you have to say regarding that. Find those scriptures that talk about overcoming it and then just do it. Just do the word of God. Just do what you want. We know that the mighty hand of God would be upon us. At that point, we would be like God to the others as we would be your representative on earth. Lord, empower us with your spirit to go from this place and just do it. Not question what you want, just do it. And see if you won't work the same wonders and mighty acts that you did in the days of Moses and the apostles, even in our lives today. Bless us in this way we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.